Hello and welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today I'm bringing you another little gameplay session from Dragon Eclipse, the board game. This is not a campaign session. This is a one-off, a little one-shot, a head-to-head -head against one of the three bosses here with one of the three starting characters or catchable characters I have in the prototype copy of Dragon Eclipse. A brand new game for Awaken Realms, by the way. We're doing sponsored content with them. This is not a sponsored video. It's a video that I wanted to do because I wanted to explore the game a little bit more and bring you all extra content because I think there's going to be a lot of people out there that are very interested and very excited about what this game has and what it's offering. And so far, I'm very compelled. I'm having a lot of fun playing this. Going at it solo, I think that's where a lot of people are probably, it's going to be the sweet spot for them. It's a solo to two-player game. It's got a lot of exploration, <clears throat> a lot of story, a lot of narrative in this world. But it also has some fun showdowns, some fun boss battles, characters and creatures that feel very distinctly different, which is one of the reasons why I'm bringing this content here to the channel, because I want to showcase the way that each boss feels different without you having to watch a full gameplay. I want to showcase the way each character, each creature we have, feels and play different, plays different without, again, having to watch an entire gameplay. So, with that being said, <clears throat> and the caveats out of the way, by the way, I have a little bit of a tickle in my throat, so... I will apologize when I take a break to have a sip of coffee. Coffee. Um, and we're going to dive right into it. I'm going to be using my Furple character, which is a character I caught during my campaign. Never played with him before, so I don't know what, how his cards operate or work. And we're going to be fighting the Elkthorn, which is another character that I could have found during my campaign, but it is not one that I actually came across. So this will be a completely new experience for me. And I'm excited to showcase it. You find the Elkhorn here in location 66. <clears throat> Hoofprints disappear into a dense grove. For some time, you haven't heard the birds or seen animal tracks. You are on your way to the Predator's Lair, there is no doubt. Enter the grove, go to script 73. So this is the core flow of the game. You'll be exploring, kind of choose your own adventure style decisions. And then you'll pop into certain encounters that'll pop out here onto the board. So, 73, the noise of a falling tree heralds the arrival of the Predator. Its eyes burn with unquenchable fury, the muscles bulge under a layer of thick hide. You hope you didn't bite off more than you can chew. Place the map aside. Okay? Set up the combat based off of the instructions. <clears throat> I already have most of it set up here. Uh, I am starting with three damage and one resource, one little water resource myself. I have a few items. I've spent some of those items during the gameplay so far, so I'm only keeping the items I haven't spent from my campaign and from each consecutive fight. Uh, prepare the enemy. Use cards 45, 46, and 47. So, the Elkthorn. We have three defense, 20 health, four attack power, and two movement. <clears throat> we have the standard abilities. Passive ability. The Elkthorn has three attack and minus three. I just realized something. In the last game I did, I should have lost. I should have lost horribly. You know why? Because he did more damage. This guy right here, his passive ability did extra damage for every damage, for every five damage it had on it. You... I don't know how you beat him. I think you got to take him out. I don't even know that it's possible to, to wind him down. Holy cow. These guys might, with the characters I have right now, these might just be, you're going to get destroyed, and that's kind of how it is. That's that, that might just be the case right now. Elkhorn has 3 plus attack and minus 3 defense for each, for each rage uh, on the board. Elkhorn discards Rage after it attacks. Okay, so it'll be putting down Rage. And it'll be making itself weak as it gets Rage. Uh, rush, deal 3 damage in range 2. And the second one is Rush Attack. If the opponent didn't gain any damage, gain a Rage. Special Ability, Attack, gain a Rage. He's just going to be pummeling me. Place a Special Ability token in the third slot. So that's when it will trigger its Special Ability. He's going to pop back up here. <clears throat> and if I want to capture him, weaken the Elkhorn. The Elkhorn has to have at least 8 damage. Snap it out of rage. Deal 4 plus damage in one turn to the Elkhorn with a rage token. 
show your power, deal 4 plus damage in one turn to an Elkhorn without a rage token. Man, this, this might be, it might be impossible. I'm playing with my lovely little furple, which is like a furry little rodent in a pineapple shell. That's who we're going up against this giant beast with. A little furry creature with a pineapple. You know, it reminds me, <coughs> it reminds me of a Cubone. It's got a staff here, you know, wearing the, the body of, uh, you know, some other, either way. Uh, Furple has 20 health, 2 attack, no defense, 2 movement. Special ability, pay 1 power to splash. Your attacks ignore defense this turn. That's nice. That's actually nice for this. And then Water Drain. Each opponent discards one card for each puddle in range 2 from them. For each card discarded this way, the opponent gains 1 damage. I'm curious to see if they're going to have a version of this where two people can go head-to-head -head against each other with the decks and the creatures that they've actually built. Okay, what else do we need to set up? So he's going to have a deck that's built off of two of these Dewdrops. Dewdrop 1, Dewdrop 2, and three triangles. <coughs> he's going to be starting in space 2. And I'm going to be starting over here in space 1. So he's going to go down. I'm going to go down. Uh, if you have a win token, discard it and use Arena Card 7 instead of Arena Card 6. Smoke is the only thing you know that repels Elkhorns. You manage to set a pile of damp leaves on fire just before the fighting starts. You know, I did have wind when I was doing the campaign. Let's see what this does. Because this is the only one that I think might be affected by this. So, Dark Grove, front. Oh, 7 instead of 6. Smoky Grove. <coughs> nice. Set up. Place a smolder in the exclamation park in the middle of the arena. Okay? Bonus action. Spend nothing to chase away. If the Elkhorn is in range 1 from the smolder, you may discard smolder. If you do, the Elkhorn retreats. Bonus action. 4 power. Light the leaves. If there's no smolder on the arena, place a smolder on a chosen exclamation point. Interesting. So I could actually... So this is where the game starts getting for the campaign. I don't need to beat him. I need to chase him away. But because this is a one-shot, I kind of want to beat him. So I'm going to try to beat him up either way. Um, I'm not going to use that smolder ability at the moment. But uh, yeah, okay, maybe I will. Because fatigue is the first card that comes out. Then we've got our lovely move, move, move. Our, our shoot forward defensive stance and energy geyser. We have new cards in this game. I rebuilt my deck. I grabbed the cards that we had available. And I built out whatever I could. So, starting with 4 damage myself. Is that smart? I don't think so. But, I mean, we're going to lose anyway. So let's let's do our very best. The way the game is going to progress. I'm going to be able to select a card from down here. I will get the resources based off of the row that the card is in. And they will all shift to the right. Energy Geyser. This is going to go under my personal card. Each time I deal damage, apart from attacks, so it can't be basic attacks, deal an additional 3 damage. I like that. That's not bad. And my Water Drain will actually work well with that. But it's passive, so I'm going to leave myself vulnerable. So what's he going to be doing? He's going to rush to me, to movement, and attack. If the opponent didn't get any damage, they're going to, he's going to gain a Rage Token. I think I am going to take this. Because this is an ability, it's going to slot underneath my creature here for now. I will gain three more power from this. These are going to be shifting down to the side. Fatigue card's annoying there. Now my base abilities here. Move, discard a card, and then move one, move minus one, and heal one. So I'm going to do a move to go ahead and move two. I want to get away from it a little bit. I'm then going to go ahead and spend one to discard a card and draw a card. I want this fatigue out of the game as quickly as possible. Okay, some new cards that we have now. Deliberate Strike. Attack. Attack again if you have at least four cards in your discard pile. Nice. Opalescent Buzzles. Bubbles. Attack in range three or heal two. So this is one of the water cards that I got from the expansion pack that I can go ahead and use. Alright. 
Moving up here with the Elkhorn, Elkhorn is going to go ahead and rush, moving one, two. Then he's going to attack. He's not going to successfully attack, so he's going to go ahead and gain a token, a rage token on the board because he uh, didn't successfully hit me. And this card will cycle down. He's going to be doing the same thing again. And remember, his passive, plus three attack, minus three defense for each rage token uh, on the board. Elkhorn discards a rage after it attacks. So the more rage he has on the board, the harder he's going to be hitting. So I would love to get defensive stance in, maybe now. Unless I do move, move, move and try to shoot past him and let him get one more rage cycle up. I don't love that though, but I would like to attack when I have four discard in my pile. So maybe we, maybe we go ahead and buff ourselves a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and gain four from the position of that card. I'm then going to have a passive defense of two. These are going to cycle down. Let's see if we get another new card. We have another new card. This is going to be a purple specific card. Reinvigorating Splash. Place up to two puddles in range two. Discard up to three puddles in range three. Heal two for each puddle discarded this way. Very nice. I might be able to control the game a little bit by healing myself, which is something that we didn't see with one of my other creatures. So part of this game is going to be knowing and determining which creature you bring out to which fight. Because if I had had this creature when going up against our uh, our Bulb, I would be doing a little bit better because I'd be able to actually kite and heal, which is something that, that I haven't seen, especially with our little Emberling. Okay. So I definitely want to get some health. <clears throat> He's going to be hitting me. I have defense right now. Is there anything else that I do at the moment? I think I just keep biding my time. He's going to go ahead and activate his card. Rushing forward, getting right next to me. He is going to attack, uh, which is going to be hitting me for a power of four, five, six, seven, minus two. So a power of five. He's going to be discarding his rage. I'm up to nine damage. That is half of my damage gone. That's going to be the end of his turn. He is going to be getting more rage after this because of his special ability. And right now his defense is still in place, but I can spend one power to ignore his defense, which seems valuable. Currently sitting with two cards in my discard, so it is not time to do Deliberate Strike. And his next action is going to be a rush and deal three damage in range of two. So if I could get farther away from him than two, I would be in an okay position. I'm going to spend the shoot forward. I'm going to gain three power from that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. <clears throat> see if that's far enough away. One, two, range two. He's not going to be able to get me here. Deliberate strike is going to cycle to the side. Again, we want to use that when we have four in our discard pile. Uh, because we'll be able to get two attacks out of that, and we can pair that with my special ability to allow me to ignore uh, his defense. Furple, plunge. Place up to two puddles in range three. Place your creature in any space with puzzle puddle. Very nice. It's a good move. Let me get a little bit farther away from him. All right. He's doing this. This ability here is a rush. Deal three damage in range two. So one, two is his rush. He's not going to be able to reach me. Then he's going to do his special ability, attack, which he's not going to be able to reach, and then gain rage. So he's going to gain a rage token. This is going to make him more powerful, but it's also going to make him more vulnerable to my next attack. So now I want to get into position to hit him as hard as possible because he needs eight damage, and then I need to do a few sequences of damage. Deliberate strike... <clears throat> Seems like it might be the obvious thing. But I'm definitely going to need uh, some puddles on the board in order to heal soon. Because if I do Deliberate Strike now, he is going to hit me. And I'm going to be in a position where I've got to kite him, I've got to get health. So let's see here. There's nothing that's letting me trigger additional abilities. His next action is going to be another rush. So he's going to step forward two. Then he's going to do three damage in range two. There's not a way for me to get farther than range two away from him at the moment. 
I could heal for th for two, but that's just going to be that's going to be a neutral action going into the next turn, and it doesn't put bubbles down on the board. <clears throat> I do need to buy myself one more turn though, so maybe this is the play. Opalescent bubbles is going to go down. I could attack in range three or heal for two. I am going to heal for two. I'm then going to... Do I even move or do I stand right next to him? I think I stand right next to him. I don't think I'm going to move. I'm not going to spend the resource to do that. He's going to go. Let's flip the card see what we get. Wave thrust. Place a puddle in range three. Move, move, attack, move, move. Wow. That's awesome. Let's see if I can survive long enough to actually use some of his special abilities, though. This is going to go down. He is going to rush forward by two. He is going to attack, dealing three damage in range two. It's not an official attack, though, so he's not getting the extra damage from his passive ability. Three damage coming down onto me. It's going to stick me at ten, which is officially half of my health. His rage is going to be removed. And that's the end of his activation. I now am going to do Deliberate Strike. That's going to gain me three more power. I'm going to um, spend one power to ignore his defense this turn. I have four plus Deliberate Strike in my discard pile. So I am going to go ahead and attack and then attack again. My attack power is... Oh, gotta be kidding me. My attack power is only two. So I'm dealing him only four damage with this attack. Uh, one, two, three, four. I am going to go ahead and spend. Oh, I don't have a base attack with him. This is another one of those characters. Oh, I do have base defense though. So I think I should have one less damage. Good catch there, Jesse. This is another one of those characters that requires terrain to be on the board for me to be as effective as possible with it. Four damage, though, is halfway to where I need it to be. So I'm okay with that. His next action, he's going to be able to reach me either way. Ooh, we have our shiny card. Fathomless Tide. Attack each enemy in any range. Move up to one enemy by one space. Deal three wounds to each enemy in a exclamation mark space. So that's very nice. So I could kite him and actually pull him into a position. So, I think I'm going to step over here, spending a power to do that. He's then going to activate his triangle, rush, and attack. So he's going to rush, he's going to attack, base attack, four, so three damage coming my way. Still not in a comfortable position, but maybe I'll be able to, to work my way around him. <clears throat> I need healing, though. Because dealing the amount of damage I need to deal in order to, to get his attention is going to be very difficult. I could also just go for the kill. I could try really hard to knock him out. I think that's going to be hard. But maybe one big attack would be able to do it. We'll have to see. Okay. From this position, I am going to go ahead and take Fathomless Tide, I think. Attack each enemy in any range. Move each enemy by up to one space. Deal three wounds to each enemy in a exclamation mark space. He's going to be moved back here. I am going to successfully attack him. I'm going to spend one so that I ignore his defense. So it'll be two more damage coming to him. I'm then going to deal three more damage because he's in an exclamation mark space as well. So an event space. So he's currently sitting at a lovely nine damage. Halfway to his damage threshold as well. Now, I can go ahead and move if I want. What's he going to be doing next? That's the question. So we're going to have to shuffle this. Triangle. So he's going to be rushing me and trying to attack me again. I think I'm okay with him not getting rage. So do I want to move or do I want to stand right here and just let him get me again? I don't have, I don't have a lot of health to play around with, though. I've got to heal. I've got to heal very soon. He's going to be gaining... He's going to be attacking... <clears throat> and gaining another rage after this because of his special ability. I don't love it. I don't love it at all. 
Um, I might be able to survive these two. That might be, I might be close to the end of this though. All right, let's see what I'm able to do. So he is gonna take the damage. Uh, I could move minus one and heal one. I think I've got to start doing this. So I'm gonna spend four. I'll move minus one and I'll heal one damage. I've got to start cycling damage off of me. Could also discard a card from the timeline if I don't like any of them. I think I'm going to stick them where they are, though. I'm going to keep them for now. And I'm going to let him go ahead and go. So, triangle. He is rushing, so he's going to move to me. He's going to attack me for a damage of three. After this, he's going to attack me again for a damage of three again. It's going to stick me at a very comfortable 17. Whew. He's going to gain a rage on the board. So if I get hit again, that's it. If I get hit again, that's it. He's not going to be doing that rage attack again, though. But I need to avoid. I need to avoid all this extra damage or heal. So the play now is a reinvigorating splash, or is it a wave thrust at the moment to get extra puddles down on the board? Uh, his next action is a rush and then deal three damage in range two. So I need to get at least five away from him. It's going to be really hard. Um, let's try this. Wave thrust. Two energy coming back. Place a puddle in range three. Move, move. Attack, move, move. So I'm going to move, move, attack so I will spend one to ignore his defenses dealing two more damage to him <clears throat> bring him up to 11 he is wounded deal four plus damage in one turn to an Elkhorn with a rage um, I deal two I dealt two damage not four plus damage so that's not gonna work right now I would love to impress him, but it's just not going to happen. I'm going to discard one to get rid of this annoying fatigue. Ooh, defensive stance. Good to have that on the board. Once I heal, that might be a lifesaver. I have two more moves from that card that I did. So one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to spend one more to move two more farther back. He now is going to be rushing. <coughs> one, two. Looking for an enemy within a range of three. Not going to be available. Um, I need to stay within range three of my this, though. So I'll actually stay right there. He's not going to be dealing me damage, but he is going to be gaining another rage. So I am, I'm really, I'm messed up if he hits me. But his defenses are down. So if I can do enough damage and avoid getting hurt, I might be able to survive. Oh, last turn as well. Let me have spent four more to take another damage off of me. I've got to whittle that damage down. It's the only way I even potentially have a chance to defeat him. Okay, Furple is going to go ahead and use uh, two puddles on the board in range two. Then discard up to three puddles in range three. Heal two for each puddle discarded this way. That's going to heal me a total of six. It's going to bring me back down to ten health left. I like where that is. I am concerned because he's still going to be, uh, I mean, he's a powerhouse right now. One good solid hit from him could be the end of me. And his next action is a move, move, and gain another rage because he's not going to be next to me. So let's let's let him have it. One, two, triangle action here. He's going to be gaining a rage, shuffling his deck so I can see what he's going to be doing next. Another triangle action. Another rage going down onto the board. That's three rages that I cannot survive an attack from him. So my option now... My option now is to take him out. Question is, what is the most effective way for me to destroy him? I've got to deal nine damage. My attack power is only two. I could deal right here four damage. I have no attack ability on my own. I could shoot forward again to avoid him, but, but then he's going to be just getting more and more angry. He's going to get more and more power. Is there, is there a way 
where I can cut through his defenses and impress him. I could go ahead and start converting him to my way, but I think one big hit from him is going to take me out. Um, let me know in the comments if you see if you see a pathway different from what I'm observing at the moment. But I'm going to try Blind Fury. So I'm going to spend one, take a step forward. I'm going to attack and gain... Oh, I can't take damage. It's too brutal. I'm going to do Plunge then. So I'm going to spend one to go two forward. I'm going to put uh, two puddles down in a range of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And I will pop into one of these puddles. It's going to gain me three more resource. Do I go ahead and heal myself a little bit, possibly? Sure. We'll spend four to get another move. We'll heal by one, dropping down to nine health. I'm lower than him now in health. So that's good. He's going to be going again, though. I've got to get wounds on him. That's the biggest thing we're facing right now, is if I, if I keep dodging him... And I don't get wounds on him. I'm, I, it's gonna be it's gonna be bad. So he's gonna go ahead and move two. He's going to try to attack, which he's not gonna be able to do. He'll gain another rage token. Then he's going to try to attack again, and he'll another gain another rage token again. His next action: rush, deal three damage in range two. So I actually have one cycle right now. I have one cycle right now where I can avoid getting wounded I can get two hits on him this might this might be where it comes into play all right let's run blind fury uh, I'm going to spend one but I gain three so I'll have two left to take a step forward I'm going to attack him spending one to avoid his defense it's gonna deal two damage to him I will take two damage myself moving me back up to 11 to do another attack dealing two damage again after that, he is going to go ahead and activate. He is going to rush, then deal three damage within range three. I'm going to be taking another three damage. So that's going to be pulling me up to, wow, 19. So my only hope is a killing blow now. And I'm concerned because I think I'm only going to be able to get, oh no, Fathomless Tide. This might be the clencher for me. Let's see if it works. Attacks each enemy with a range, within any range. Move each enemy up to one space. Yes! Pushing him back into the Fire Embers is going to be the way I do this. Fathomless Tide is going to trigger. I'm going to attack any enemy on the board. Uh, I'm going to spend one, which I gained from this card, to avoid his defense, dealing him two damage. Then I'm going to push him back one space. Move each enemy up to one space away. Deal three wounds to each enemy in a exclamation mark space. Three wounds to him, that is going to be just enough to knock him out. I did not think that was going to be possible. If you won, go to script 87. I like that. But do you see how, I mean, these creatures are extremely tight. They're extremely hard to, to, to balance and to kite. you got to really think about the deck that you're going in with, which creature you're fighting with. It's a very interesting puzzle. Okay, 87. Elk, Elkthorn roars when your creature launches another attack. It backs away, the rage in its eyes turns to fear. With a whimper, it jolts deep into the grove, trampling shrubs on the way. You hope this victory will also scare away other predators, at least temporarily. Choose one. Gain two items. Heal five. Wow. Heal five. That's a big thing right now in this game, because heal so far has been something that I have not had a lot of. Draw three cards from the advancement deck and add one of them to your creature deck or uh, into the unlocked card tray. That's nice, too, because that's how you start deck-building your, your characters. Oh, man. I am going to say I would have drawn two items. I really would have healed two, but we're not going to, you know, we're going to play it the other way. Um, the two items I would have drawn would have been a helping hand. You've helped someone in need. Now, these are these are secrets. Stop drawing secrets, Jesse. Draw items from this deck over here. Um, and the question is, do I now incorporate these into the next game I do? I think I will. Uh, red berries, your attack gains plus one. And rope, which is going to let my checks have a modifier of one or two. Red berries are the only thing that are helpful. I already have them. I didn't use them. But we are going to be going up against 
a very regal beast in this next fight. Um, uh, let's see if I can find him. So I put him back over here. I think I had him. I had him out somewhere. I set him down on the board in some position. No, nope, that's Blob. It's my fire guy. I don't know. I don't know where I put him. I'm gonna be fighting this guy, big winged bear, in the next uh, gameplay video. So stay tuned. Keep an eye out, uh, and let me know what you think of the game so far. Are you gonna be back in Dragon Eclipse? Like the puzzles here are really interesting, and I like the Pokemon style caption, capture and grab and release, and the way that it's approaching this whole experience. It's very cool, and I like that it's a solo game. I gotta be honest, a manageable, kind of approachable solo game from Waken Realms, right up my speed. Love story, love narrative, love beautiful components. So this is giving me all of that. All right, stay tuned for the next gameplay. We will see you.